It's time for Darren's Top Tip. One skill set that we tend to develop over time is the ability to more effectively communicate in the performance environment. And one great example of this is in accounting. Now, it's often the drummer's responsibility to count the band in, and there are a number of essential things that we need to communicate at this time. This top tip is dedicated to improving your counting in skills. Okay, so one of the first things that we need to communicate during accounting is the tempo. Now, the tempo means the speed of the pulse of the particular time signature we're going to be playing in. Now, for ease of example, I'm just going to use a 4-4 time signature. A 4-4 time signature is where we play four quarter notes per bar or measure of music. And the most common thing you hear with this time signature is the drummer counting off one, two, three, four, and then the band launching into the piece. Now, obviously, the speed of that count will relate to the tempo of the tune you're about to play. So if it's a slower tune, the tempo might be going by one, two, three, four, and there you're effectively communicating a slower tempo. Now, to reinforce this count of this particular tempo, we can use a number of different methods. We can use finger snaps, one, two, three, four, or we can use our sticks by clicking our sticks together, and that's a very common way of do it, doing it. Now, a lot of the time, I try as much as possible to have a verbal count when I'm doing this, because if somebody misses one of the clicks that I'm making, either with finger snaps or with the sticks, and there's no verbal count as to which beat I'm on, they can often come in late or early. So, as much as possible, depending on the environment, I will always count in uh, with a verbal backup, sometimes with a stick click, sometimes with finger snaps. But this can depend on the type of music that I'm counting in. Now, depending on the tempo, we may need to extend the length of our count. So, for example, if the tempo of the piece is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, it's fairly brisk, then we may need to give the band a two bar count because one, two, three, four, and then to start, it's not giving the band much of an idea of the tempo or an ability to connect with that tempo to effectively start on beat one. So what we can do is we can extend the count to two bars. Now, usually we don't count it like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then start, which is two bars still. But the most common way of counting that would be to go one, two, a one, two, three, four, and then start. If the tempo is even faster, then we may need to elongate the count even more. And there we can do it over four bars. So that would be if the tempo is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, something like that. We we could count one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, and start. It's a bit of a mouthful for a start. So what you might want to do is for the first two bars, just count the bars. For the third bar, count half notes. And for the last bar, count quarter notes. So that would sound like this. Here's our tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So if I was to count this in, I would go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two three, four. And then we come in on beat one. So make sure that you um, change the count to m take into account the tempo of the time signature that you're counting in. The faster it is, the more you need to elongate the count to communicate it to the rest of the band. Now, another thing that we can add to our counting is a subdivision of the pulse. So let's just say the tempo of the of the piece we're about to play is one, two, three, four, that sort of tempo. But most of the groove that we're going to be playing is in eighth notes. We can include the eighth notes in our counting using the eighth note phonetic. So that would sound like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and that gives a clear indication of the type of feel that we want when we come in. If it was a shuffle, for example, we could even count it one, a two, a three, a four, a, and give an indication of a shuffle feel. So sometimes giving a little bit of an indication as to the feel of the piece we're about to play can further enhance everybody's collective um, internalization of the pulse. One element of your gig which can make a difference to how you count in will be the environment. If it's a very, very big stage, like a stadium, obviously you're going to need to communicate your counting uh, loud enough so that the rest of the members of the band can hear you. So in that situation, I would, again, be using my verbal count. I'd be clicking my sticks together. Or if it was a very big stage, I might even resort to playing the hi-hat for the counting so that everybody can clearly hear it. 
Conversely, on a smaller stage, you might need to reduce that because we don't want to be yelling out this time signature if everybody can easily hear us. So just regulate the volume of your counting to the environment in which you're playing. Now, one piece of gear which I use all of the time, both in my studio work and my, and my teaching and in my live playing, I've even got one of these things in my hardwired into my rack here, is a metronome. Now, this is a digital metronome and it can help us to reference tempos anything from about 30 beats per minute all the way up to 300 beats per minute. Many of the modern digital metronomes are programmable, so you can program tempos in for a gig or a rehearsal. So they're really, really useful, and it just allows us to be really, really consistent um, in our countings. Now, one other thing that can influence our sense of tempo and speed is how we're feeling on a particular day. When we go to play a gig, we might have a fair bit of adrenaline going, and we may start to count tunes in too fast, just because we're a little bit hyped up. So. Um, a metronome like this can really help us um, be nice and grounded and be secure of the tempo that we're counting in and not to go too fast. And one instance where this is extremely important is when obviously working with vocalists and dancers because the tempo of the piece that you're counting in, if it's too fast, they may not be able to do the dance moves or even get the words of the song out. So it's very, very important that you're consistent. And a metronome like this um, can really help you do that. OK, so hopefully you can take some of that information away uh, to help you improve your counting in skills. Now, this is one skill that really separates the amateur from the semi-pro and pro drummers, um, is this ability to be extremely confident and communicate very effectively a good sense of tempo and pulse to the rest of the band, hopefully resulting in a killer performance. My name's Darren Ashford. Until next time, have a good one. DrumLessonAcademy.com Take your drumming to the next level.